Hi, grade 10s. My name is Mrs. Nielsen, and I am your assistant principal and grade 10 coordinator. This is what I look like with a mask on. And this is what I look like without my mask. Um, we're going to spend some time this afternoon. Normally, we would have an assembly and we would chat about uh, rules, expectations, and lots of things about high school. Of course, we can't all be in the gym together um, on the bleachers. And so, unfortunately, we're going to have to do it by video. But we'll be spending some time this afternoon going over different rules and um, just how the school works and what you should have in your timetables and all sorts of important information that you need to know for grade 10. So hang tight, we're gonna start a screen share here and hopefully we will get you through all this important information as quickly as possible and it will help you orient yourself to high school. You're gonna have to bear with my technology skills here. All right, here we go. So grade 10, student handbook orientation. Our motto here at Spruce Grove Comp is building excellence and success together. Do well what you do. So we are gonna spend three years together. You are the graduating class of 2023 and we're all gonna work together to make sure you have success here and that you learn everything you need to know and get everything you need to get accomplished um, for post-secondary out of the way. So we are here for you. Um, your teachers, myself, your counselor, Mrs. Many, we're all here to help you on your goals for post-secondary and for life after high school. We have lots of people here to support you that are um, admin and counseling teams as well. So you will see Ms. Otto, our principal, in the main office. She is also out and about in the hallways, and she is here to support us in what we do and your teachers in what we do, and of course you as well. Mrs. Many is your grade 10 counselor in IEL. Many of you met us when we came around to your feeder schools before you were out of school. Um, she is located in student services and you can always book an appointment with her and she can help you with timetables and counseling and talking through hard things that might happen in life and also just celebrating the good things. There's also a grade 11 and 12 team. Mr. Rose and Mrs. Stewart are with the 11s and Mr. Robertson and Mrs. Spink are with the 12s. So if we are not available, they are also available to help you if you need. Timetables. So really important, you would have got your timetable this morning at the tables as you came in. You should have an AM class and a PM class, and you'll also notice that you have seminar on both days, but they should change days. So on day A, you would have seminar in one spot and then lunch, and in day B, you would have seminar in the opposite spot and your lunch would change. So check your timetables and make sure that is the case. If for some reason you have seminar in all four of these middle blocks here, we are working on it and we will try to get you a new timetable by Wednesday. Just be checking your power school. You got your login information this morning and you should be able to find that. Timetable checks. So I need you to be very diligent in checking your timetable and making sure that you have what you need in your timetable. You should all have eight courses. You should not have any spares. And you should make sure that you have your four minimum core classes in your schedule. So everyone, if you look at your schedule, you should have a math, a science, an ELA, a social studies, and FI students, you're gonna have an additional course of FLA. And instead of social studies, you would have Etudes Sociales. So please make sure you check those timetables. Maybe your teacher can do that with you after and make sure you have all those things. If there's a problem with your timetable, you need to check out student services and make an appointment with myself or Mrs. Many to get that problem sorted as soon as possible. Please don't crowd the office and student services. If you have to, just fire us an email or fill out the timetable change request form. Um, we are trying to keep as little people as possible in those small spaces. Another thing to check on your timetable, if you didn't take summer school and you don't yet have phys ed and comm, that should be on your timetable. That is a requirement for graduation. Alberta Ed says you have to have it. So please make sure you have PE and comm and it should alternate. So on day A, you would have one class and on day B, you would have the other class and you'll go back and forth every other day. Our bell schedule is very different this year. We are working on keeping you in cohorts as much as possible. So that means you only have two classes per quarter. 
which is a big change. Normally when we came and talked to you, you would have had two semesters and four classes in each, and that would have been what we were telling you high school would look like. Um, very different this year. So you have an AM class and a PM class, again, with your lunch and seminar staggered in the middle. Our warning bell goes at 819, so you need to be headed to class around 819, and you need to be seated and ready to go at 824. Attendance and being on time is really important in high school. We have these nice big blocks so your teachers can get lots accomplished every day with you. But if you miss one day, that's like missing three regular days. So we really need to be aware of being on time, being ready to learn, and being in class as much as possible. Seminar is really important at Spruce Grove Comp. We used to have seminar at the end of the day, and you would use that to go to whatever class you needed some extra support in. A little bit different with only two classes. And as you saw on your timetable, your seminar is 40 minutes before or after lunch. So you're going to make sure you go to your seminar, and that's to get help to do homework. You can review your notes there. You can rewrite them so they make more sense and get clarification from your teacher. You might have some reading that you need to do that you know it's going to be hard to do at home. Might as well get it done while you're at school. Um, rewriting exams if you work out uh, alternative solutions for exams with your teachers and anything that'll help you do better. So this is the time to go check in with your teachers if you're not doing so well, or even if you are, to say, how can I do better? Can you check on this? Can you help me with this? We're gonna have orientation seminar this week, Wednesday to Friday. That means your attendance in seminar is mandatory this week. You must attend your seminars from Wednesday to Friday. Your teachers are gonna have some great ideas for how to use seminar in their courses this year and walk you through how you can make seminar useful for you. We also have a change in our school entrances. Uh, we have zoned our school to make sure that we have less people than normal in certain areas. So we need you to be aware of this map. They should be posted around the school. You would have seen them on doors when you came in this morning. They're in the hallways, but we're gonna go through it really quick here as well. So it's color coded, it's fairly easy to follow, and it is based on what class you are attending. So if you are in the orange zone, so you're coming to school and your class is somewhere on the first, second or third floor in this orange area, you're gonna enter through the west entrance, which is over here by the horizon stage, and you're going to use the west stairwells. So you're gonna make sure you use that side to maneuver throughout the school. It's closest to where your classes are, so it's the easiest option anyways, but you wanna make sure you use that. If you are in the yellow zone, that means you're gonna be using the front doors, please, on the second or third floor. So that yellow zone is on the second or third floor. So you'll come in the main entrance on, in the main, on the first floor and you'll immediately go up the center stairwell to access those classes. If you are in the green zone, you're gonna be using the east entrance. The east entrance is the one closest to kind of the field area at the end of the bus lanes. And that is for all these green area classes. So if you are in any of those green classes, that's the door you will enter the building and the stairwell you will use to get to those classes. So if you're already in the building, just make sure you use the right stairwells. North entrance, that's the parking lot entrance. That's for these pink classes here. So a lot of our CTS, mechanics, construction, intro to trades, comm tech, photojournalism, foods, laws in place, all of these classrooms here are gonna use the north entrance. And then we have this tiny little entrance on the other side of Horizon Stage, and that's our blue entrance, and that's gonna be for these computer science, info pro, electro tech, uh, we might have some comm students in here and design studies classes. So we know that your entrance might not always be ideal for you based on where you, come to school or that you're maybe you're coming with an older sibling who drives um, but we really ask that you make sure you stick to those entrances and those stairwells so we can limit the amount of kids in any one space and keep you all safe. DLR, um, we are still waiting to see if DLR is going to be a go but I'm going to explain what it is because it's a really important place and you really need to understand what it is if we do have it up and running. DLR stands for our directed learning room it's where you would go to make up or rewrite exams. Teachers may assign you if you're getting behind on your work. So you would go and get caught up on your work. 
And it might also be a way to remind you to make better choices for seminars. So if you're getting assigned to DLR because you are way behind on work, that means you're probably not using seminar as well as you should and you need to start doing that. Um, so that is Directed Learning Room. That usually runs Monday to Thursday from 8, 5, or sorry, 3.15 to 5 p.m. And so we can assign you to that if you are not keeping up with your coursework or if it can be an option if you need to rewrite exams. You can also just go work there if you need to stay at school and get things done because you know you can't focus at home. So we'll let you know if we start that up. Um, if we see a need for it, we will be starting it. Your comp card. You would have got your school picture done hopefully already today. If not, they will be calling you down to the gym. Your comp card is your ID and you need to have it on you at all times. We use it for exams. We use it to check that you're a student of ours. So you need to make sure you have it in your backpack or in your wallet um, that's gonna be on you. You can get a backup of your comp card at the library. You get one ch chance for a backup that's free. After that, you have to pay $5 to get it replaced. And again, like I said, you need it to take out books from the library for your final exams, uh, your textbooks. So it's a really important thing to have on you. Okay, so we're gonna go through some school expectations of you. Um, these are pretty straightforward. They're not anything that crazy that you wouldn't have had at schools before, but we just wanna make sure everybody's on the same page. We haven't been in school for a while, so we're gonna make sure that you guys know what we expect of you. Um, we know that you guys all come from different backgrounds, that you may have different expectations in your homes, you have different cultures, you may have different um, values, et cetera. And so at school, our goal is to make the environment safe and caring for everyone that's there, regardless of your background. So we have certain expectations that are there to keep you safe. It doesn't mean that, or comfortable, I guess, is more than safe. It doesn't mean that um, we expect you all to believe the same things about everything, but it's just the expectations for our school. So our first expectation is active learning. We expect you to participate in and be engaged in your classes. That's the best way for you guys to be successful in high school is to make sure that you are attentive, that you are engaged, and that you are making sure you are active in the classroom and taking responsibility for your education. That means being there, um, being on time, asking questions, using the supports your teachers give you, doing your work so you know that you're getting the concepts. We don't want you to leave everything to the last exam and just hope that you do well. We want you to be engaged and knowing where you're at and completing those assignments all the way through. Appropriate dress, we do have a dress code. We expect you to wear clothing that's respectful of a learning environment. Um, this is your job to be at school. And so we expect you to wear a dress that kind of goes with that responsibility. Um, Non-revealing, you cannot have inappropriate slogans or references and that just helps us keep a good environment at the school. So in particular, no butts, no boobs, no buds, no bad words, no backs, no bellies, no booze. So none of those things on your clothing. If you forget about these rules and you don't have alternative clothing at school, we will find you something to wear. So please make sure that you're following those rules and we don't have an issue with that. Cell phones and smart devices. All your teachers are going to have rules on these things in their class. You are expected to follow your teacher's individual policy, period. No arguing, no buts, no what if. You follow your teacher's policy. It's their classroom, it's their policy, and it's what works for them. Um, a cell phone or smartwatch, anything that makes calls, text messaging, or can access the internet falls under these rules. Um, our expectation is that you're in the classroom to learn. And so if these devices are helping you with that goal, your teachers may be fine with them, but we are expecting you to be engaged and learning, not Snapchatting or texting, etc. If there is a specific reason you may need to have your phone on you, um, you need to check with your teachers, you need to make sure they're aware. Um, students who use any technology, personal or school owned inappropriately will be banned from use at school. And depending on the offense, you may be referred to the RCMP. So you need to understand that you are responsible for everything you do on your technology, and there are consequences for poor use or inappropriate use of technology. 
Um, again, like I said, it's at the discretion of the staff member if you can use your technology or not. We don't want it to interfere with your learning. Really important for you guys to understand, you cannot post pictures of anyone, including staff members, without their permission. So if you're on lunch and you're goofing off with your friends and they don't know that you've posted something and they haven't given you permission, that's a problem. You need to make sure you have explicit permission of posting anything. Um, we do not accept harassment online and we need you to talk to us if you are having a problem with that so we can help you. Um, and again, technology is a privilege in our building and it can be revoked uh, if you're not using the technology use agreement appropriately. Attendance, we talked about this a little. You have three hour classes. So if you're missing three hours of class, you're almost missing what would have been three days of class normally. So we are really looking for good attendance. We know that this is gonna be a different year um, with COVID restrictions and people potentially having colds that can't come to school all the time. And we're, we're gonna work with you as best we can. Your teachers are gonna be there for you to help you through that. Um, but when you are well, you need to be in class. You need to be here when you can be. We need to make sure you're learning as best as possible. So please be there when the bell rings, be on time so our, your teachers and the rest of your peers can get learning and not be interrupted, and you can make the best of the time you have in school. We've missed you here. Um, I'm sure some of you have missed being at school, and so we wanna make the best of being back. We're excited to be back in the building. Normally, we would be talking about our attendance pyramid. We have a very strict attendance policy at Spruce Grove Comp. We had certain levels of attendance here. So you see there's a three to five that's not making the picture, but six to 10, 15 to 11 to 15 and 16 to 20. At this top of the pyramid, we would have been having conversations about um, not being in the building anymore because you would have missed so much school that it would have been impossible to be successful in your courses. Six to 10 absences was near the bottom of the pyramid before. Six to 10 absences in, 40, in a 41 day quarter is gonna be a lot of absences. So we need, again, to make sure you are in class so you can be successful. If your teachers let us know that they haven't seen you for a while and we haven't heard why and you're not completing work at home, we're gonna have conversations really quickly with you and your parents because we need you to be earning your credits to be able to graduate in grade 12. I know that sounds like a long way off right now, but it really flies by and we need to be on top of your credits. Expectation five, loitering. So this is a big deal um, for this year because of our COVID restrictions. You cannot be idly kind of hanging out in the hallways or just lingering, waiting for a friend, etc. in the hallways. You are expected to be in class. Um, you can be, you know, going to the bathroom, the cafeteria, the lounge, etc., but not just wandering around and waiting and moving spaces all the time. Okay, it's really important for your guys' safety that we keep our cohorting as much as possible, that you stay in relatively the same space throughout your breaks so that we can make sure that we can contact Trace and we can keep you as safe as possible. We also don't want you disrupting seminar when other people are, are in seminar and you're on lunch. So all those things are really important. You will be asked to move if you're just hanging out in a hallway or a stairwell. That is not an option this year. Respectful communication. So um, our staff are going to venture to be respectful at all times with you and we expect the same back. Appropriate communication means non-heated conversations, positive body language, appropriate volume, tone, choice of language, and active listening. So it's not talking over your teachers. It's not raising your voice at us because you're frustrated. We expect everybody to keep a level head and to really listen to understand the other person's perspective. This includes electronic communications. So if you're messaging on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, et cetera, we expect it to be respectful as well. Um, we're building strong relationships, that's our goal. And so in order to do that, we need to make sure we're always respectful of each other. Substance use, there is no smoking on PSD property. Vaporizers are also banned from Parkland School Division property as per BARD policy. So no vaping, no smoking anywhere on the premises. If I can see you, that means you're on the premises. So you need to be far, far away where I cannot see you. It is not allowed at school or anywhere near the school. 
We know that the federal marijuana legislation has changed. That is not a recent change anymore. We should all be on board by that. This hasn't changed any of the laws in our school. If you are under 18, marijuana use is illegal. And if you are, even if you're over 18, none of you should be in grade 10, marijuana use and substance use of any kind is banned in our schools and any public areas in the city. So we should not have an issue with that. It should not be at school. You obviously cannot be at school if you are under the influence. If you are, you will be suspended. If you have paraphernalia on you, you could be suspended. So make sure those backpacks don't have things in them when you get to school because that is a problem and we will be dealing with it. Obviously sharing vapes is a huge issue this year. So you need to make sure that that is not something you are engaging in. Personal safety, of course, everyone should feel safe in school. We have a very strict fighting policy and we stick to it. Uh, fighting will result in a suspension. So if you are involved in a fight, you will be suspended. If you spectate a fight, whether it's on property or not, you will be suspended. If you promote a fight through coercion, so texting someone that they should meet someone or walking by them and muttering things, you could be suspended. Recording or distributing fight footage is also a suspension. Do not get involved. Walk away. Get an adult if you're worried. You need to stay away. Stay out of the drama. No fighting, please. If you have a safety concern, be proactive and access support. So there's myself, there's Mrs. Many, there's our entire counseling team, entire admin team. You need to get help if you are worried about a situation escalating. Student parking shouldn't be an issue for you guys. Grade 10s are not allowed in the parking lot. We do not have space to accommodate all grade levels. The parking lot is also not a hangout area. So if you are in the parking lot, it's because you're getting in your car and you're leaving. If you have an older sibling that is driving you, you should just be getting in the car and heading out. For lunch, you have access to the lounge, the cafeteria, the union cafe, the library, open classrooms. If the teacher is present and has told you that you can eat there, you cannot be in a classroom where there isn't a teacher because we need to make sure that we are cleaning classrooms. And if there's not a teacher, we might not know that you were there and it won't get cleaned properly. So classrooms will be closed and locked if teachers are not there or wanting you to eat there. The pergola outside and the benches, and there's also grass on the south side of the school. All those areas are options for you. We encourage you to go outside while it's still nice um, and you can access those areas. Announcements. So we have monitors around the school. You should check those every day. Um, we also make announcements, but if you're not sure if you heard them or if you missed something, it'll have clubs. Um, once the cafeteria is up and running for meals, it'll have the specials of the day. Um, it'll announce meetings, so you should be listening to those. If you think you missed them and the screen didn't scroll right and you had to get to class, you can always check those on the website um, at sgchs.psd70.av.ca slash announcements, or it's just check under the student tab. Like I said, you're the grad class of 2023. This three years seems like a long time, but it's going to fly by. You're going to start hearing information probably already this fall about meeting and talking about grad. We want it to be on your minds. We want it to be special for you and it takes a long time to plan. So listen for those announcements, get excited, stay focused on that goal. We want you to be connected this year. It's a little bit harder because we're cohorting and we don't necessarily yet have access to all the things we would normally have in high school. Um, so get to know the people in your classes because you're going to be spending a lot of time with them. Please ensure you still maintain safety and respect everyone's personal space. People are going to be at different comfort levels with being around, with wearing masks or not wearing masks. So we just need to all follow the AHS guidelines and the lawful directives of masks to make sure that everybody feels safe and respected. And we want you to respect and adhere to your classroom seating plans. Your teachers are legally responsible to have those seating plans in place right now. They're there for a reason. We need to be able to know who you are around. Um, they're gonna do the best they can to make those successful seating plans for you, but we need to make sure that you are respecting those. Fun things that will be happening in the school, after school fall musical theater, there's gonna need to be performers and backstage tech technicians. They are doing Matilda this year. So if you are interested, check out that information with Mrs. Gilchrist. 
Mrs. Anderson runs the drumline and the chamber ensembles as after school options. So if you haven't been able to access music through jazz or concert band, or you have, um, but you're kind of interested in more music options, listen for info or see Mrs. Anderson for info on those. We also have lots of sport teams at the comp and we're really hoping those will be able to get going. They're a delayed start right now. So listen to the announcements to hear if any of these sports might be starting up and to get involved. And that's it, we got through it. So I will stop rambling at you. Um, I hope you got some more information on the school that you have some clarity. If you have more questions, ask your teachers. Your handbook is online as well, so you can check out more detailed things about courses and anything else that happens, school rules and student policies. Um, we look forward to having you in the school. We're excited about this year um, and excited to work with you to get you towards those post-secondary dreams. Have a great day, grade 10s.